another day to live through. Better get started. inherited the world only three years. Seems like a hundred million. off the weak ones and leave them for the pit. KW calling. Come in. KOKW calling. I'm on international frequency. Come in.
And this garlic's lost its pungency. There was a time when eating was pleasurable. Now it bores me. Just fuel for survival. I'll settle for coffee and orange juice this morning. But first, there's my life transitor. I'd better replace that garlic. I'll need more, lots more. Better stop off and get them. my reason, and reason's the only advantage I have over them. I've got to find where they hide during the day. Uncover every one of them. Now, where did I finish off yesterday? Madison Street to 31st Avenue. Eleven kills. Over three years. And there's more than half the city I haven't searched.
fresh, but I'll take only what I need. They've got to last. have to be replaced before dark.
drive them back to darkness. Another day. Another day to start all over again.
sun's already set. They'll be everywhere.
three years. It's highly theoretical, Ben. Theoretical? Do I have to remind you that theory is the beginning of solution? Is Europe's disease carried on the wind? Is it, Ben? Could be. And if it is? It isn't, Burge. Is that what you really think, or just what you'd like to think? I, I cannot accept half-baked theories that sell newspapers. I'm, I'm a scientist, not an alarmist. You're whistling past the graveyard. Is that a commentary on my work at the lab? We both know how hard you've worked. I'm sorry, Ben. I just can't accept the idea of universal disease. Uncle Ben, you've got to tell Cartridge. All right, Kathy. Who can resist that face? <laughs> All right. Card tricks. Card tricks. Robert, is it possible this germ or virus could be airborne? Anything is possible, Verge. The best brains in the world have been running through this thing with a fine-tooth comb. The germ is visible under a microscope, but it's not like any bacilli I ever known. In what way? It can't be destroyed by any process we've been able to uncover. But with the whole world trying, there must be a solution. Hey, Mommy! Hey, Mommy. We need you to cut the cake! <laughs> right now, our problem is to cut that cake. wind wake you up? It always does. How do you feel? I'm all right. Oh, don't get up, honey. I'm not sick, Bob. I'll make you You don't sick. have to. I'll be all right. Go on and read your paper. All right.
Oh, sweetheart, look, if you don't feel well, please go back to bed. I'm just a little tired, that's all. I wish somebody would find a vaccine. It's all we're working on at the lab, Birch. Maybe you better not send her to school today. All right. You... You think you should go to work? I have to. Oh, Bob. Bob. I'm so frightened. Everything's gonna be all right, sweetheart. <laughs> I are multiplying. That kicks the bone marrow theory in the head. This specimen shows a higher white count than when I put it on the slide. Those cells are still living, Dr. Mercer, off one another. There has to be an answer. You heard that all communications are ended outside the continental limits? Yes, I heard. That leaves it in our laps. So we keep trying. Where's Cortman? Well, he should be here by now. You two stay on this virus theory until I decide it's exhausted. Right. Yes, sir? Morgan will fill you in. All right, sir. And what did the great man of science have to say today? More of the usual? Oh, he's trying, Ben, just like the rest of it. And nothing works. The streets are swarming with truckloads of bodies that they're throwing into that god-awful pit. And the dedicated Dr. Mercer goes on with his plodding, unimaginative approach. You have a better idea? Maybe. At least it involves imagination. Ben, it's as simple as this. An unknown germ is being blown around the world. It's highly contagious and it's reached plague proportion. And you don't believe some of the dead have come back? Now let's get to work. And why are they burning the bodies? Why don't they bury them? Because it's the best known way to control the contagion, to keep the germ from spreading. That's what we've always believed at any rate. You prefer us to believe in vampires? If they exist, yes. There are stories being told, Bob. By people who are out of their minds with fear. Maybe. But there are too many to be just coincidental. Stories about people who have died and, and have come back. They're stories, Ben, stories. And why are the infected people always so tired in the daytime? Why can't they stand the sunlight? Why are they only seen at night? Come here. Look. I know it's look. Now, is this the still or isn't it? It doesn't alter. And this bacilli is found in the blood of every infected person, or isn't it? To show me germs is not to refute these stories, Bob. Point is, if there are vampires, they exist in spite of these germs. Come on, let's get to work. And until further notice, this station will continue its around-the-clock coverage of this national disaster. And now, we switch you to the state capitol, where His Excellency, the Governor, is speaking from the Executive Mansion. Further, I have, in conjunction with the federal government, declared this state to be a disaster area. The public health is dependent on bodies of the deceased being burned. You must notify the health department immediately if you have a plague victim in your home. Under no circumstances should you gather public if you're the dire emergency that exists, I intend to... Anything new? Huh? No, nothing new. Mommy. 
I said no. Verge, there's nothing they can do. We can't just let her lie there. Well, this way she has a chance. If you call a doctor, he'll report it. Do you want that? Blindness is one of the symptoms. You're not to call a doctor under any circumstances. No one is to come into this house. Now remember that. Mommy. Mommy. Mommy, where are you? I've got to pick Ben Cortman up on the way to the, the lab. No one is to come into this house. Now remember that. Ben, we're late. Ben, what's the matter with you? Nothing, and I'm going to keep it that way. Ben, look, let's talk about this. There's nothing to talk about. You think I'm out of my mind. You laughed at me in my theory. You might be one of them. Ben, look, you're ill. You ought to see a doctor. No doctors. You take care of your life, I'll take care of mine. Now get away from here. You understand? Get away from here! If you're looking for anybody but me, forget it. Are they all gone? That's right. Is there any hope from the latest report? No, not yet. But believe me, Morgan, we'll find an answer. When, doctor? We need it right now. I need it. You're the only one who wasn't afraid to come here today. What's going to happen, Dr. Mercer? Is everybody in the world going to die before someone finds the answer? No, I don't think so. I don't deny there's some strange 
evolutionary process going on, but mankind won't be destroyed. The fact that you and I are working here today is evidence of that. the doctor. I had to. I told you not to call anyone. Love. She was blind. She couldn't see. She kept reaching out her hands, groping, groping. And all of a sudden, she was gone. And they came and I tried to stop them. They took her. I saw a truck out there. Was that it? Was it? I'm sorry, lady. There's nothing I can do. Let that truck through. Get out of the way.
Who's there? Portman thinks he can get to me by destroying my car. His wits are getting dull. <laughs> this convertible would be nice. Probably handles well. But I can't think of comfort. There was a time when I shopped for a car. Now I'm looking for a hearse. This station wagon will have to do. Every street, every house, every alley, every inch of this town, I've got to find it.
someone else is alive in this world. But where are they? Where are they hiding? This is Robert Morgan. If somebody can hear me, answer me. For God's sake, answer me. This is KOKW calling. KOKW calling. Answer me. You know they're out there, don't you? You poor, driven thing. Everything's gonna be all right. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Everything's gonna be all right. All right. You're going to get better. We're gonna have lots of happy times together. You'll see, everything's going to be fine.
I'm not going to hurt you. Can't you understand? Wait. If I was one of them, you know that they can't come out until sundown. Do you want to come with me or do you want to face them? Feeling better? Yes. Would you like a cup of coffee? Thank you. You seem very well organized here. Yeah. My name is Ruth Collins. I was married. I lost my husband. You are alone. You were married. Yes. Children. A daughter. What are you doing? Please stop, please. Stop it, please. You're making me sick. Why do you turn please. away? Please. Why do you turn away? <laughs> You think I'm one of them? You will be. You've made up your mind just because I... You can't change the facts by talking. Facts? What facts? That I got sick? I've had a sensitive stomach all my life. I saw my husband killed, torn to pieces right in front of our house. I've been wandering ever since, hiding at night, not eating more than scraps. Sick with mourning, sick with fear, unable to sleep. Then you shout at me. You chased me across the field, hit me, dragged me to this house. And to top it all, when I get sick because you shove a piece of reeky garlic in my face, you tell me I'm infected. Where are Let you me going? Go. You can't go out there. It's almost sunset. Let me go, you can't I go out there. Now in a few I minutes, the streets will be full Let up. Me go. And please, I don't let care. me give you a blood test. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me.
You must be hungry. I'll fix you some dinner. You seem used to them. Oh, as much as anybody could be. I'm not frightened of them anymore, if that's what you mean. Oh, I protect myself against them, but only because there's so many. Individually, they're weak, mentally incompetent, like animals after a long famine. If they weren't, they surely would have found a way of breaking in here a long time ago. Come out, Morgan! Hear that? That's Ben Cortman. He was my friend. Your friend? He was like a kid brother. If I could find him and destroy him, but you said he was your friend. When I find him, I'll drive a stake through him, just like all the others. But you lived through... But you lived through all this. Do you know why? Perhaps I was chosen. Hm. That's a laugh. Or perhaps it's because a long time ago when I worked in Panama, I was bitten in my sleep by a bat. My theory is that the, the bat had previously acquired the vampire germ. By the time it entered my blood, it had been strained and weakened by the bat system. As a result, I have immunity. Well, it's only a guess, but it's all I have to go on. You don't think... But I'm immune. Do you? It's a simple matter to find out whether you are or not. What will you do if I am infected? Cure me? You don't have to answer. I know as well as you do. It's incurable. There might be a way. If not of killing the germ, at least of containing it, keeping it from spreading. If I had the equipment, the time. But you don't. I'll be one again. What do you mean? You found a solution? That's right. Exactly as you said it could be. I take that for it. What is it? Defibrinated blood plus vaccine. The blood feeds the germ. The vaccine keeps it isolated and prevents it from multiplying. We've had it for some time now. We? We? There are quite a number of us. And I thought you were alone. I was going to cure you. Does that amuse you? No. Now, I want the truth. I want all of it. Why are you here? To find out if you know any more than we do. You know, far less. We're alive. Infected, yes, but alive. We're going to reorganize society. Do away with all those wretched creatures who are neither alive nor dead. 
Start everything all over again. And you want me to join? You can't join us. You're a monster to them. Why do you think I ran when I saw you? Even though I was assigned to spy on you. Because I was so terrified of what I'd heard about you. You're a legend in the city. Moving by day instead of night. Leaving as evidence of your existence bloodless corpses. Many of the people you destroyed were still alive. Many of them were loved ones of the people in my group. I didn't know. Is there any way you can get out of here? What do you mean? They're coming after you tonight. That's why I was sent here. To prevent you from resisting them. I'm supposed to keep you here. Until they come. To kill me? Yes. Your new society sounds charming. The beginning of any society is never charming or gentle. And you pretended to be shocked at my violence. Well, what are you waiting for? Why don't you go on and use it? Get it over with. Use it. Get it over with. <laughs> Now you know. What are you going to do? What are you doing? It's already done. What? Look. <sighs> Look! The antibodies in my blood worked. My blood has saved you, Ruth. Do you know what this means? You and I can save all the others. We won't be alone. We'll never be alone again. You are sure? Wait. Where are 
are you going? I to get out of here. Tell him not a threat to us. You can't go out there. You will not get ten feet. When they come here, there won't be time for questions and answers. They'll come to kill. For God's sake, Robert, let me go. Oh, Robert, please. Ruth, look. Tomorrow. Please. Oh, Robert. Tomorrow, Ruth. Tomorrow will no. be all right. Robert, no. Detected under the microscope. Wait, I'll show you. I'll prove it to you. I'll check it again. Look at this. This will prove it to you. Ruth, there's no change. I've double checked.
They were afraid. They didn't know. 